It's Draconic Cat here, and today we're going to be looking into the exciting world of Pokemon. One thing which is always associated with Pokemon is without a doubt Pokeballs. They are iconic in design and serve a very important function on your journey to becoming the very best there ever was. As you can see, I've actually dressed up for the occasion. Can you? Can you notice it? It's on my collar. Uh, basically, this is a Draco Ball. It has a negative chance to catch me and is thus completely useless. Kinda like me and kinda like some of the Pokeballs we will be looking into today. Let's get started! Starting off, we have the Pokeball. The Pokeball is the most basic type of Pokeball you will come across on your adventure. That was a lot of times saying Pokeball. It's one of the weakest Pokeballs, only having a catch rate modifier of 1, but it's also the cheapest as a result, so keep that in mind as we carry on to number 2. Next we have the Grape Ball. It is truly as the name says, it is a ball which is great. Or rather, it is at least greater than a Pokeball. It has a catch rate modifier of 1.5, meaning it has a 50% higher chance to successfully catch a Pokemon than that of a regular Pokeball. Moving on to number 3. Capping off your standard Pokeballs is the Ultra Ball. This ball is basically the same as a Great Ball, but instead has a catch rate modifier of 2, which, you guessed it, means it is twice as likely to catch a Pokemon than that of a regular Pokeball. The pattern on top of an Ultra Ball is supposed to form a H. This is because in some countries, the Ultra Ball is actually known as a Hyper Ball. Moving on to number 4. The most powerful Pokeball is of course the Master Ball. This ball has a catch rate modifier of 225. This means it will never fail to catch a Pokemon in the wild. You will usually receive one just in time for your encounter with a legendary Pokemon, but honestly, I would actually recommend you keep it for catching Zigzagoons and Caterpies and things of that nature. It's a much bigger flex in my opinion and will without a doubt make all your friends really mad. In Black and White 2, you can actually receive two Master Balls instead of one by talking to Professor Juniper in Mistral and Sea and also by defeating Colrus after the main story. Another way to get Master Balls is via the lottery. However, your chances of getting one this way is so low, I'd just recommend starting a new game to get more. In Sword and Shield, your odds of winning a Master Ball is 1 in 100,000, which is 0.001%. In theory, this could take you somewhere above 250 years to win if you tried every day. Talk about having an existential crisis, which I currently am having after finding that out. So, moving on to number 5. The last ball from Generation 1 is the Safari Ball. This ball can usually only be obtained and used in the Safari Zone, making it a relatively rare ball overall. I say usually because there is actually one way to get a Safari Ball outside of the Safari Zone. In Sword and Shield DLC, there is a machine called the Cramomatic. If the player inputs 4 Apricorns, there is a 0.1% chance to get a Safari Ball, which is actually kind of cool in my opinion. The same goes for the Sport Ball, however we will cover that later on in the video. Now, moving on to Generation 2. Here we have the Level Ball. As the name implies, it certainly has something to do with levels. Basically, it is more likely to catch a Pokemon if your Pokemon's level is higher than that of the Wild Pokemon. There's not really much more to it than that, so moving on to number 7. The Lure Ball is a ball which has a higher catch rate when used in a fishing encounter. The catch rate of this ball has been changed a few times over the course of its existence. It started by having a catch rate modifier of 3 in Generation 2. This was then hired in Sun and Moon to 5, and then lowered to 4 in Sword and Shield. Moving on to the next ball. The Moon Ball is a Pokeball which increases the chances of you being able to catch a Pokemon which evolves through the use of a Moonstone. However, do you remember me saying that some of the Pokeballs were useless? Well, the Moon Ball is one of them. In Generation 2 games, Moon Balls were actually programmed incorrectly. Instead, it has an increased catch rate on Pokemon which evolve using the Burn Heal item. So, if you ever feel like a failure in your life, remember the big companies also make big mistakes too. Next up, the ninth Pokeball on this list. The Frem Ball. 
I love that name so much. Has the same capture rate as a regular Pokeball. So, what makes this worth using? Well, once a Pokemon is captured with it, their friendship will automatically be set to 200. Who knew friendship could be measured in numbers? Jokes aside, this ball is actually super great for catching Pokemon which evolve via the friendship mechanic. On to the next ball. The Heavy Ball is pretty self-explanatory. It has an increased catch rate against Pokemon which are heavy. Upon researching this ball though, it turns out there's quite a few quirks which can happen with it. I'll be honest and say I don't really fully understand the complex formula that is used to calculate whether a Pokemon is caught or not, but I can say the formula does not like heavy balls. In Pokemon Crystal, there is a glitch that causes the weights of Kadabra, Tauros, and Sunflora to be interpreted as having massive weights, thus making them easier to catch with a heavy ball. In every game except Sun and Moon, if using the heavy ball would cause the wild Pokemon's catch rate to become a negative number, it is instead set to 1. So, what makes Sun and Moon different? Well, it will instead set the catch rate to 0, making it impossible to successfully catch some of the Pokemon in that game. Moving on to the next ball. Next up is the Fast Ball. This ball is most effective against Pokemon, which are fast, are able to flee from battle. Due to a glitch in Generation 2, the Fast Ball only works on free Pokemon, these three being Magnemite, Grimer, and Tangela. From Generation 4 and onwards, the Fast Ball has an increased chance to catch anything with a base speed of 100 or more, which is much better in my opinion anyway. Moving on to the next ball. I actually couldn't find an image of the Spark Ball, or at least a good one, so I made my own, and I did it for a few of us in the video, so enjoy that. The Sport Ball is a ball similar to that of a Safari Ball. It can only be used in the bug catching contests found in Johto. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, you can actually get this ball in Sword and Shield DLC. Moving on to Generation 3. First off we have the Net Ball. This ball has an increased catch rate when used on a Pokemon which has the bug or the water type. The catch rate modifier when used on these Pokemon used to be free, but has since been increased to 3.5 from Gen 7 onwards. Moving on to the next ball. Here is the Nest Ball. This ball is similar to the Level Ball in that it helps catch lower leveled Pokemon. The difference is that it is just low level Pokemon in general, and it doesn't rely on you having to have a higher leveled Pokemon to be more effective. Moving on to the next ball. The Repeat Ball is a ball which is most effective on Pokemon which you have already registered in your Pokedex. This ball feels a little bit redundant since you already have the Pokemon you would want to use this ball on. However, I think it's a pretty ball and you can never have too many of those, am I right? Moving on to the next ball. Next we have the Timer Ball. I actually think this is one of the more useful balls on this list. It becomes more effective the longer it has been since the start of the battle. That's really all there is to this ball, so let's just talk about the next ball. One of my personal favorites is the Luxury Ball. The ball is just as effective as a Pokeball, so what's the big deal? Basically, once a Pokemon is caught in one of these, it will gain twice the amount of friendship. This ball kind of makes me feel a little bad though because it kind of implies that the other balls are not as comfy to live in, but we will just ignore that. Moving swiftly on to the next ball. The Premier Ball always felt like a super secretive ball to me when I was a kid. It's not even that hard to obtain and it's just literally a recolored Pokeball. To get a Premier Ball you have to purchase 10 Pokeballs. In earlier generations I remember you used to have to purchase exactly 10, no more and no less. Now however, if you purchase like 60 Pokeballs you will receive 6 Premier Balls so I'm glad that they fixed that. Moving on to the next ball. The Dive Ball is a ball which works best when used for water encounters, more specifically underwater encounters. Going underwater isn't a mechanic in every Pokemon game, so it was later changed to also be effective when used while surfing or fishing, which is totally better anyway. So moving on to the next ball. In Generation 4, the Dusk Ball is a very effective ball which helps to catch Pokemon encountered in caves or found at night. 
This ball can be effective against nearly every type of Pokemon, with a few exceptions like Pokemon which can only be found during the day. I guess Pokemon for this ball was too good though, because it's one of the only balls to actually have its catch rate lowered in a later generation. Moving on to the next ball. The Heal Ball is probably the most useless Pokeball in my opinion. It fully heals the Pokemon you catch with it, restoring its HP and removing any status effects it received prior to its capture. The reason this is so useless though is because you're likely not that far away from a Pokemon Center in the first place, and you're probably going to be sending that Pokemon to the storage system anyway, which also fully heals it too. So I'd just use any other Pokeball. Moving on to the next ball. The Quick Ball is one of the best balls in my opinion. This ball has a really high catch rate if used on the first turn of a wild encounter. It used to have a catch rate modifier of 4, but it has since been up to 5, making it even better in later generations than it already was. Moving on to the next ball. Lastly for generation 4 we have the Park Ball. This ball allowed you to recapture Pokemon transferred up to your Generation 4 games in the PAL Park. This ball is actually really weird in that it doesn't replace the ball that your Pokemon currently has, meaning that no Pokemon can actually be caught inside this ball. As a result, it remains one of the few Pokeballs that is still unobtainable in Sword and Shield. Moving on to the next ball. In Generation 5, the Dream Ball was introduced and so was the Pokemon Dream World. Honestly, Pokemon Dream World warrants its own video, which I will definitely make at some point, but let me try explain everything you need to know to understand the Pokeball. Back in the day of Generation 5, you used to be able to visit the Dream World on your computer by sending one of your Pokemon to sleep on your DS. You could walk through different locations and befriend Pokemon by completing games and making them happy. Once you chose to wake up from your dream, you could then encounter these Pokemon in the Entry Forest. Once in a battle with these Pokemon, a Dream Ball would suddenly appear in your bag and you would be able to automatically catch the Pokemon. In Generation 8, these balls are actually made a return and now have an increased chance to catch Pokemon which are asleep. Which is pretty cool. So, moving on to the next ball. In Generation 7 we have the Beast Ball. This ball increases the chances of you catching an Ultra Beast. When used on anything other than an Ultra Beast, it has a catch rate modifier of 0.1, which is pretty insane. I remember this actually made people want to catch their shinies in this ball since the odds of catching something with it was so low, so it was a much bigger flex. So moving on to the final ball. Last but certainly not least is the Cherish Ball. This ball is one of the only balls that cannot be obtained in any game whatsoever. No exceptions. The only way a Pokemon will have this ball is if it was an event Pokemon obtained outside of the game itself. I'm actually surprised this was never made available in Sword and Shield, but it definitely makes your event Pokemon that bit more special than they already were. Anyway, that's all the Pokeballs! If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much, like I really wasn't expecting anyone to still be here, so if you are here that seriously means a lot to me, like for real. So if you'd like to let me know what other videos you'd like me to do or any other topics you'd like me to cover, feel free to let me know below because I would love to have more videos to make and I don't really have any ideas right now. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it basically. So, um, stay safe everyone! Goodbye!